also enjoy a good story, like uh, for my anime preferences, uh, same as the manga preferences, really. But I also drew, got drew in for the manga because uh, when I discovered it, it was like, it was new, it was exciting, and I loved the art style. One of my favorite types of animes are 90s animes. I love 90s anime. I grew up with the 90s. I grew up with several 90s animes, such as, well, stuff that was on Toonami at the time. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Digimon. I love the style of the 90s because it's... So over the top in a way because they got like all the crazy outfits, the big ass shoulder pads, one of the crazy colored hair, and the ah, power of energy blast. I, I love the 90s. It's, it's my favorite era of anime to watch. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story of how I got into manga. I was at a health clinic one day. Well, no, not a health clinic. What was it? I was at a doctor's appointment and whatnot. I was waiting for my checkup and whatnot. And I was like, oh, I want to say around maybe 13 years of age around. And I noticed in the pile of, there was a little, little, little uh, basket that had a whole bunch of magazines and whatnot. And in the pile of home ec magazines and like uh, Newsweek magazines, in the pile was a copy of Show and Jump. I'd forget which volume it was, but I remember it was bright red with a picture of the uh, Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho on the cover of it. And that was the first manga that I ever picked up. True, it was a show and jump, but it had a whole bunch of manga, and I was just engrossed at all the storylines. I loved it so much that I asked the doctor if I could take it with me, and he said, sure, I had a cool doctor back then. And yeah, that was my start into manga, really. As for anime, I did basically what anybody else had. I watched Pokemon and Digimon mostly because when I was growing up, I didn't have cable or satellite, so I had to watch everything on the good old WB and Fox Kids on the Fox Box. Yeah! Love that shit. But uh, yeah, I love good stories. I love adventure stories are my favorite. I love good characters. Good characters are good for me, especially characters that I haven't seen before. And considering all the anime and manga that I have read and watched, uh, if I could find any new characters, that's a bonus for me for watching it. I hope that answered your question, and thanks for asking that. The next question comes from one of my first subscribers, Byrope Girls. Yeah, sorry if I mispronounced that. Anyway, the question asks, not to insult you or anything, but you really should get better at realizing holiday specials on time. Nah, nah, what? no hard feelings. Nah, nah, not at all, not at all. Let me tell you a little story about the holiday special this year, my Santa review. You see... I was just done with my Giga Gay no Kitaro Halloween special when I was uh, thinking of, you know, the anime of 2011's coming up and whatnot. And uh, and then I got to thinking of, like, you know, I really should have a hollow. I should, I should really have a Christmas special, you know? I mean, I, I had my Nightmare Before Christmas one last year, but that was supposed to be a Halloween special. And... I, I kind of mulled over the idea over the Thanksgiving break and whatnot. And it got down to literally December when I came across my Santa and decided to review it. So, literally, that review was last minute, basically. I had no idea beforehand if or what I was going to do for a Christmas special. So, that was literally a last minute thing. So... That's why it was uh, a little bit down to the wire for that review. But yeah, I know, procrastination, that joke and whatnot. I am trying to get better with it. I've uh, started a new technique with uh, my uh, making of videos. Like before, I would just do, uh, I would just do kind of a uh, improv. It's called improv. God, I can't think of the word. Ah. 
Well, anyways, uh, what I do now is that I am writing a script now. Like, I, you know, I heard it's a good idea and whatnot, but I never really realized how good of an idea it was. It's like I was writing a script and whatnot, and I realized while making the My Santa review, writing the script is like everything was going by a lot faster. I got, like, halfway done through making the review in, like, one day. Now, that's what I call progress. So, I've now started with making a script. So, there's that for you. And hopefully it will make things go a little bit faster, though no promises, because school's going to be starting up soon for me. All right, there's more to this question. Also a question, do you read the three big three? And if so, what is your thoughts on each of them? Ah, yes, the three big three. So that would mean there'd be six, right? Okay, so that's Inuyasha, case closed, uh, what? Oh, oh, you're talking about uh, the three most popular, biggest anime nowadays, uh, being uh, Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. Oh, okay, that's what you were talking about. Uh, uh, I, I, I understand, I understand you. So, yeah, the three big three, uh, meaning the three anime that have been pretty much titans in their own right for having the largest amount of episodes that I've seen. But they aren't the longest, because... There have been a lot of anime out there that have been running even longer than these big three, like Case Closed. I mean, that series has been running for like, oh my god, forever. And I think that's still going. I think the next I think the next season it's gonna be coming out soon. And hell, hell, even Pokemon. Think about Pokemon. The characters are similar, so if you think about it, it's still a continuous storyline. And that's got like what, thirteen seasons now? And you count up all those episodes, holy crap, is that a lot. So yeah, they may not be the longest, but they are the most popular r running nowadays. So, so to save me some time, let's talk about each of these anime one at a time. Because I've been watching the anime and not so much the manga. If you like the manga, then kudos for you. You did the smart thing. Uh, so I'll talk about each of them one at a time, starting with... Naruto and Naruto Shibuden, its successor. Ah, yes, Naruto. Filler! The anime! Okay, 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 everybody's heard that joke before. But it's for good reason, too, because when Naruto was starting off, this is how an anime and manga relationship works. A anime company comes up to a mangaka, let's say Naruto, for example, and say like, hey, you've got a very popular manga. We want to make an anime based off of it. And the manga guy's like, okay, sure. And the anime guy are like, okay, but you just got to make sure that you're able to keep up with us. And the new coming manga guy's like, okay, yeah, I, I could do that. I, I think I could do that. It's like, okay. And so what ends up happening is that you got one guy, the manga guy, who is making all these volumes of books and has to do this all by himself, and then you have the anime company that has a staff, has a number of people to make all these anime episodes, and as it turns out, the anime people are faster than the manga people. So, on the times when the anime is waiting for the mangaka to finish writing the manga, what the anime people are doing is saving up time by building filler episodes, or making filler episodes to take up the time that uh, is needed for those series. And that's exactly what happened for Naruto. And I watched the first Naruto anime all the way through, like, you know, the first one that was on, Toonami, when it was still running. I watched it all the way through, filler and all. And, well, I liked it as it was, I liked it as it was starting out, I mean... Uh, I love the supporting characters, and I mean, who didn't love any of the supporting characters from Naruto? There were so many different personalities to choose from, and a lot of them really good. It's just, well, it, the protagonist is not a ninja. Naruto? No. I gotta have to agree with the populace here. Naruto is not a ninja. You cannot wear bright orange and claim to be a ninja shouting and yelling but i know what the i know what the manga guy was trying to do he was trying to make a coming of age story that's why we have naruto shibuden afterwards but more on that later it's a coming of age story but there are a lot of other animes that do this coming of age story and do it better like uh like beast player aaron for example one of my personal favorites 
it, it goes through the tale of a little girl from her childhood all the way up to adulthood. And it does it in a seamless fashion that doesn't take 400 or 700 episodes to do. It's the seamless 27 episodes to get to the ending. And I know that's not really a good comparison because Beast Player Aaron didn't have fighting and whatnot in that because Naruto had to have those fighting things in that because that's what it was required for the story. But with Naruto, because of the anime and the filler episodes, it's best to watch, it's best to read the manga. That's what I have to say for Naruto and Naruto Shibuden. I watched, I watched all of Naruto and uh, I watched all the way through Naruto Shibuden up to the point where they defeated the puppet. Uh, I, I can't remember all the terms and all the names of people, so excuse me if I seem incompetent here. Uh, I only got to the part where they beat the puppet master guy and they revived Gara from his near-death experience of getting his beast re uh, torn away from him. But, uh, yeah, I got all the way up to that point, and then I just kind of, I don't know, I lost interest. I kind of looked around and said, ooh, what's this over here? Kind of got distracted on a little ADD moment there. Uh, I don't have it, by the way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Naruto storyline, I love the supporting cast, but I don't like the main characters. Sakura, she gets, she, she gets better in Naruto Shibuden, but she's still a bitch. She's still a bitch to Naruto and whatnot, and I'm still rooting for Hinata. I heard about the her near-death experience, and I'm glad she's still alive. But, uh, yeah, there's that. And also, the relationship between Naruto and Sasuke. Sasuke was never intended to begin with to be in the story. It was something that the editor, that the manga's editor of Naruto, the editor said, hey, you need a rival for Naruto. And the, and the manga was like, well, uh, okay, what kind of rival? And the editor said, I don't know, just, he needs a rival. And so the manga like did a bunch of research on like all the rivals and whatnot, which is not something he should do because have you seen a lot of the rivals like in anime and manga? Like take Eye Shield 21, for example. It's kind of like the dispassionate, dispassionate, overachieving, overachieving, punk-ass asshole. Always, all the time. Not to mention that he has to be perfect. And, uh, did anybody else get a feeling that Naruto was a little bit gay for Sasuke? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I think they were subtly hinting at it, uh, what with the whole them kissing scene, Naruto and Sakura always getting mopey in Naruto Shibuden when anybody brought up Sasuke and whatnot. And so, yeah, those are my beefs and preferences for Naruto and Naruto Shibuden. I would actually get back into it through the manga. Maybe I think it might be worth looking into again, but I've kind of lost interest in the anime and whatnot. Next up is Bleach.